In this video we're going to be looking at solving quadratics where we have to factorise the expressions into double brackets. We're going to look at three types of questions. One where the expression has already been factorised into double brackets. One where it hasn't yet been factorised. Um, and one where we'd have to rearrange it first and then factorise the equation. So looking at this first one, we have k plus 2 times k minus 5 and that equals 0. So the idea behind how we work these out is that you've got a number times another number and that equals to zero. So we've got to think what could or what must one of these numbers be in order to get an answer of zero. A could be any number. It could be 3.27 times zero would give us zero. So as long as B is zero, then the answer would be zero. Or if a was 0 times any number, then the answer is 0. So that's what's happening here. We've got one number times another number, and either of them can be 0 to make 0. So if we take this further, we've got k plus 2 equals 0, or we say that k minus 5 equals 0. So that means that k equals minus 2, or k equals positive 5. And that's um, our two solutions. Now, just to uh, remind you of how this works with application to the graph, um, it's going to be a positive quadratic, because if we expanded this, these brackets, the k squared term would be positive, so it's, uh, it's going to have a u shape our quadratic um, and it's going to cross the x-axis at minus 2 and at 5 so you know it's going to look something like that um, let's move on to the next one we've got 4x plus 4 times 3x minus 5 so again exactly the same method one of the brackets has to be 0 so 4x plus 4 equals 0 or 3x minus 5 equals 0. And so we rearrange these to solve for x for both of them. So we've got 4x equals minus 4, which means that x equals minus 4 over 4. So x is minus 1. Or we've got that 3x equals 5, positive 5 and then x is 5 over 3. So we have again two solutions, x is 1 or x is 5 over 3. Now let's move on to the second type where the expressions have not yet been factorised. So I'll bring that down here and we'll do some work on it down here. The first one we've got g squared minus 15g plus 54 so we need to factorise that expression so we've got to think of two numbers that multiply to make 54 and add to give minus 15 so that's going to be um, g minus 6 and g minus 9 and we're going to say that that equals 0 and then from there it's exactly the same as before so g minus 6 equals 0 or g minus 9 equals 0. Remember, because one of those brackets has to equal 0 for there to be um, an answer of 0. So g equals 6 or g equals 9. Uh, let's do the next one. So we've got 4n squared plus 3n minus 7. I'm going to use the AC method for this. So minus 7 times 4 is minus 28. And I want to think of two numbers that multiply to 8 minus 28, add to make 3, and that's going to be positive 7 and minus 4. So we've got 4n squared minus 4n plus 7n equals, sorry, minus 7 equals 0. We're then going to factorise these 2 to get the... Um, common factor, so we'll take out 4n 
and we can take out 7 of the other one. So this one's going to leave us with n minus 1. If we take 7 out of the other one, we'll have n minus 1 again. So in brackets, we'll have 4n plus 7 and n minus 1. That's all equal to 0, remember. And then, again, just like before, either 4n plus 7 equals 0 or n minus 1 equals 0. So either 4n equals minus 7, which means that n is minus 7 over 4, or n equals 1. Now let's move on to the final type. That's where the um, the expression is not equal to zero yet. So just take this down here so we can do some work on it. Um, we're going to have to rearrange it. The first thing to do is make it equal to zero because you can't solve them unless the expression equals to zero. So taking this first one, we've got d squared and then I'm going to add 14d and add 13. So if I add 14d, add 13, this will become 0. Um, and I need to add it to the other side. So I've got d squared plus 14d plus 13 equals 0. And it looks like we've got factors of 13 and 1. So we've got d plus 13 and d plus 1 equals 0. And then solving it, we've got d equals minus 13 or d equals minus 1. And then last one, I want to get all the terms on one side of the equation. Um, I like to try and keep the squared term positive where possible. So I'm going to move this term, take away 31f from both sides so that this side becomes 0. And let's have a look at this one then. So we'll have 0 equals 12f squared minus 31f plus 7. Again, it looks like I'm going to have to use the AC method to factorise this. So uh, 7 times 12 is 84. And we're going to need two numbers that multiply to give 84 and add to give minus 31. So think about the factors of 84, it's not going to be 1 and 84, it's not going to be 2 and 42, um, 3 and 28, that looks like it's going to work. So we'll have um, 0 equals 12f squared uh, minus 3f minus 28f plus 7. And then again, we factorise these first two terms and the second two terms. So we're going to end up with 3f. And then inside we'll have 4f minus 1. And then if we take out a minus 7 from this, we're going to be left with 4f minus 1. Then we can factorise out this 4f minus 1. So we'll have 4f minus 1 times 3f minus 7. And remember, all of these steps equal to 0, so that's equal 0, as is this one. Um, so finally, we can say that 4f minus 1 equals 0, um, or 3f minus 7 equals 0, we'll deal with that one in a minute, so we'll have 4f equals 1, so f is a quarter, or we have 3f minus 7 equals 0, so f, 3f sorry, equals 7. So f equals 7 over 3, and that's our second solution there.